guys, welcome back to the Her Story and Sneakers podcast, where we'll be showcasing some of the waviest females in the sneaker industry community and all things related. Today, we have a creative specializing in creative direction, digital communications, social media, set design, and the co-creator of Sneaker and House Plants. We have the one and only Tasha. Hello. <laughs> um, so we've got Tasha on today to talk about kind of what she's done in the media creative um, realm and also sneakers and house plants. So to start, do you want to give people a little introduction as to what sneakers and house plants is if they don't actually know? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I run sneakers and house plants, which is basically com- a community space on um, Instagram right now. Uh, basically, it's just combining sort of our interest for sneakers and house plants, obviously, but with sort of like a sustainability aspect. Um, yeah, so right now, obviously, we post sort of like educational content on there. Um, and then sort of we're moving into sort of filming uh, digital workshops and then basically hopefully an IR rail workshop when if someone wants to sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out everybody yeah. that's actually got money. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. Um, so you co-created that uh, mm-hmm. with your partner, I yeah. believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what? Well, actually, before we get into kind of how that came about, um, do you want to give people an insight into the creative aspect of you? So going back to kind of what inspired you to take on this career Mm -hmm. um, in like the digital media creative space? Yeah. So, yeah, sort of when I was younger, I was always sort of interested in like creative and fashion um I always used to like sort of buy fashion magazines and everything um and my mum was really like sort of pushing me in sort of like that creative sort of element um then basically throughout my life I was sort of doing that and then went to uni and then yes I graduated uni two years ago yay Uh, yay! (laughs) in the pandemic (laughs) which was great because I haven't had my graduation yet but you know it will come but um yeah so I at uni I went to UCA in Epsom and mm-hmm. I did um fashion promotion and imaging okay um yeah so it was like sort of when I joined that it was like sorry what did that kind of consist so of? it was like sort of it was a bit of everything which is af- which is why I feel like I do a bit of everything now but mm-hmm. it's, um they sort of did sort of fashion styling fashion photography um sort of like digital media um like magazines what else did we do loads of stuff yeah so we did all everything oh and promotion like Mm -hmm. marketing um so yeah we did a bit of everything and then we would like specialize so like I specialized in like styling and photography Mm -hmm. because I really wanted to do styling like that was my thing I went to uni I was like yeah I'm gonna be a stylist yeah I can't wait and then yeah I started it and it was fine then we had like a placement year Mm -hmm. and then um (laughs) Yes, we had to do sort of like internships and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I did my fair run of internships, which was great. I'm paid, (laughs) yeah. So that was fun, but it really made me hate styling. Oh, wow, okay. (laughs) But I interned for a stylist. Yeah. But she was nice, she was nice. But I think it was just like, it was just not for me. Is it just because you had like... It was just all the running around. Yeah, you used to be just, a runner. You're just running around all the time. You get sent shop. And I remember it was like in the summer and it was so hot. And yeah. I was literally like, oh my God, what am I doing? And obviously, obviously you don't get paid or anything. It's just like, it was just, I know it's about experience, but it's just not the one. Mm-hmm. It was not the one. Yeah. Um, I think that those kind of I think placement you- years make or break and make you realize, do I actually want to do this? Because you realize that you have to go through that you have to go through the grit to get anywhere in like basically any industry yeah literally so yeah so I did that and then I was like yeah no I don't want to be a stylist anymore (laughs) okay (laughs) and then um so shout out to anyone who does it because uh uh, it's a lot of work um so yeah I couldn't so I didn't want to do that Mm -hmm. and then basically I ended up I got really interested in um like photography so yes for for my final year project I created um a photo book about South Asians in Britain Mm -hmm. um so basically yes I was sort of doing it around my own family's like archive imagery so my mum used to keep stacks and stacks of photos from when we were younger and she'll pull them out and be like oh look how cute and I'd be like yeah but then actually when I was at uni I was like oh my god I actually need those photos now so (laughs) (laughs) I got them back and then sort of But then it was sort of like a way of connecting with my grandparents as well, because Mm -hmm. um, they passed away when I was really young. So like, especially my, I never met my 
uh, granddad. So it was a way of like connecting with them as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I basically used all the archive imagery from when my grandparents were in India and Kenya because um, my granddad was in the army. Okay. So um, yeah, so it was all sort of imagery from there um, that I used in the photo book. And then it's sort of like a past, present, future theme, if that makes sense. Yep. So, yeah, so I sort of did like collage. I really liked collage and then um, like creating visographs. Um, and then sort of I also photograph like communities in, mm -hmm. well, sort of near, near to me. So I went to Gravesend and I went to Southall. Yeah, big up Southall. Big up Southall. So I, there was me in Southall with my camera. I'm <laughs> taking pictures of all the aunties and they're like, what are you doing? Shout out the aunties. The aunties are the original. Yeah. The, the originals that used to wear the suits and the, the crepes. Literally. Because a lot of bindi babes want to be claiming that that's their trend no. now. Big up the aunties. No, literally. So yeah, so I basically went around with my little camera taking pictures of them. Um, but yeah, and then sort of put it all together cause, and then created like this photo book. Um, so yeah, that was that part. Then the future part was sort of like, I guess, taboos in our culture, like mm -hmm. sort of like interracial relationships, because I'm in an interracial relationship. Um, then sort of like women empowerment as well, because in sort of in my family, we're all like, there's three of us, which are sisters. Mm -hmm. Then my mum. So like my mum is really like an inspiration, like to me and my sisters, because um, my parents sort of got divorced um, okay, yeah. when I was like a teenager. And obviously divorce in our community oh, yeah. is sort of... Very shun. Yeah, yeah. So it, was it, it wasn't hard because my mum always taught us to think about like not worry about what other people think about. Yeah. But then you'd still go out places and people be... Yeah, you hear the comments. Whispering. Did, but um, sorry, I just have a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, do people say stuff to your mum in terms of the fact that she had three daughters? Yeah. Because yeah. If, for those that don't know in the Indian community, uh, a lot of people want sons yeah. <laughs> and they don't want daughters. No. Um, and like for me, it's, I have one sister, mm. <clears throat> but then I have two cousins that are basically my sisters as well. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when there's four of us and we're out with either my auntie, who's basically my mum or my mum, the aunties will be like to them, oh, like, oh, Bajani, I'm they, like, you know, they? poor you. Uh, yeah. yeah, you have four daughters. Yeah. Uh, how yeah. do you how do you cope so I was just wondering if uh if your mum mom yeah, also no, experienced no, she, those. she did and then also sort of like like you'd go around relatives house and then like the daughters be made to do something and sort of like the cousins that were boys would just sit there and not do anything <laughs> yeah. and you'd make tea and bring them and like my mum was not about any of that she's always been like you can do whatever you want like that's why you sort of need to have a career and be like financially independent mm -hmm. so then you can basically do what you want without a man yeah. which I always thought yeah I'm so like I'm so lucky with my my mum basically to like allow me to do like even in creative industries like in our culture people want you to I don't know be a doctor or yeah like other things like she always pushed me to do like what I wanted to do which is great. Yeah, it was really, it's really nice to hear that your mum actually uh, encouraged you to pursue a creative career. Because mm. um, I even just had Jez on, so you guys will have seen the last week's episode. She has a Filipino background mm. and even um, she was just saying like her mum, it took her a while to kind of understand mm. um, why, you know, that th you don't have to go down the, the, the job route job, that's yeah. kind of been uh, sold to you since you've been a kid type of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's nice to know that yeah. obviously someone who's actually Indian and comes from an Indian background even your mom is like yeah yeah pursue something creative yeah because um my mom didn't necessarily deter me from pursuing anything mm. creative it's kind of a different story just in the sense of you know she was an immigrant so mm. um she didn't kind of understand. understand yeah yeah um but yeah that's great yeah. to hear it's nice <laughs> to hear that um yeah big up your mom yeah like, Ruby. Really, <laughs> <laughs> really kind of changed it's nice to see because it's like uh, hopefully that will continue and mm. there will definitely be you know the next generation and yeah. with the, hopefully us if we become parents if if God wills and if yeah. we wish <laughs> um, that we'll be able to kind of encourage our children that mm. you don't have to go down that standard route yeah. like there is the world has completely changed yeah. but it's like your mum probably clocked onto that before yeah uh, if she was encouraging you from you know yeah. years yeah. ago mm. but yes that was my piece. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah but yeah so you were always empowered by women then yeah yeah, yeah definitely Amazing. um 
Where is it? What else is saying? Uh, so that's why you basically chose to go down the photography, photography route. Photography route yeah, with that, yeah. Um, so yeah, then I obviously, there's also like a religion aspect that I put in the photo book because obviously I'm Sikh. Um, and that was important to me in a, like, in a sense of I really aligned to the values of like sort of peace and like sort of honesty, like those values I take mm-hmm. from it. Um, so yeah, so that was a part of it. Cause also I feel like sometimes people don't always want to talk about religion cause they just, they think, oh, it's just one certain thing and it's yeah. strict and, but well, for my family, we just take elements from it that we obviously want to carry on with and not all of it that people will probably think is strict and scary. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like people fi- are scared to talk about religion. <laughs> yeah, a thousand percent. I think that, um, I think that everyone knows that once they declare themselves as being religious yeah or following religion you're going to be held accountable mm-hmm. uh, which is really stupid yeah because <laughs> even religion accounts for the fact that humans are flawed exactly um but yeah so i agree in that sense uh that yeah you, some people don't want like to talk about it no. but i'm glad you are yeah and with being a fellow Sikh, yeah um, <laughs> yeah that's nice um, so you guys kind of you grew up going to the Gurdwara and stuff. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like we grew up, and then when sort of my nan was around, we used to go all the time, and then like help out do the langa and everything. So yeah, like that whole element of it, I like that community element, like which I feel like I carry on in my other creative practices. Mm-hmm. So like when I was focusing about like our South Asian community, then it ma- led me to think about, oh, the sneaker community. Like, I'm really interested in, like, people, um, like, places and, like, their stories. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, that's what I wanted to create in the photo book, sort of a narrative. Obviously, it was sort of a personal narrative, but I feel like there were things in the book that pe- other people could relate to if they were of that culture. Even if they weren't, like, I feel like it's sort of something to give you, like, an interest in that culture. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. So after graduating, yes. Um, what led you to want to make sneakers and houseplants? So yeah, so obviously I graduated in the pandemic. In the pandemic, <laughs> <laughs> which was like looking back on it now, I'm glad that I was I graduated at the beginning and I didn't go back into it because I feel sorry for the people that had to go back into uni, like because yeah. if whereas it was sort of like a shock and you just had to deal with it. Um, so yeah so I graduated then and then basically like sort of my life plans everyone has a life plan after uni mine was to move to London Mm -hmm. get a fashion job yay (laughs) then obviously pandemic come and I was like yeah I'm not moving (laughs) to London (laughs) I need to move back home so I moved back home uh, with like my sisters my parents and so yeah and then basically it was literally just like the job hunt (laughs) the job hunt to find any like I was applying for anything and everything and it was like there was fashion there was like fashion well basically yeah there were fashion and sort of maybe a few like music or like arts anything sort of like that (laughs) rapper (laughs) rapper (laughs) um like it was literally anything and everything because I was so like I don't know I feel like when you finish uni you're really like there's no guidance you're really dropped you're really dropped and then you don't really know what to do. You just become a beg. Yeah. <laughs> you're literally like to everyone, please give just me Just take me. <laughs> like, I don't even want to do this, but, but please no, just li- give me money. Literally, like I would apply for so many things and I wouldn't, like, I'd be like, why am I doing that? I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. But like, I felt like there was a pressure, like, to, like, I finished, especially for me, I felt like there was a pressure because my mum had let me do this. I need to, I need to not prove because she wouldn't care, but like, for myself like get a job like yeah just do it like after uni but it just yeah so it it didn't it didn't really happen what was the um job application process like for the careers that you were kind of going for well for the jobs you were going for well a lot of them was like obviously like you'd send your cv but then you'd get like loads of tasks so then you spend ages yeah so you'd get tasks like i don't know if it was a social media job (laughs) someone just be like get me my breakfast (laughs) order me an uber literally so like they would ask you like tasks like oh if you apply for a social media job they'd be like create 10 posts blah, blah, blah. okay yeah but like you'd spend hours doing them then they'd be like oh unfortunately you have not been successful and I'd be like, imagine you see they used one of your yeah, things <laughs> I would be so angry but yeah it was just it was very like deflating I know for me and a lot of my other friends like 
would all apply and then you'd get excited and you'd be like, oh, I've just done all these tasks and they've found someone else. Because it would always be down to like, oh, someone has more experience. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know, for entry level jobs, I don't really understand because it's like, don't you want entry level people? So yeah, so that was me like just having like, I don't know, like, I feel like with Sneakers and Houseplants started because I wanted my own space in the industry mm -hmm. that I wanted to be in that obviously for the job route was not, it wasn't happening right now, but obviously it was the pandemic. I knew that people probably weren't hiring as, as much. Yep. Um, so yeah, so basically I would do like, so it was in lockdown actually that I started thinking about it. Um, I would do like creative, like photography projects, I guess, to put on my like portfolio. Mm -hmm. So one day I was like, oh, let me just, like I would take random things in my house and take pictures of it basically and because I'm really interested in set design I would create like sets out of like fabrics and things um so yeah so for Seekers to Houseplants I literally took all my like sneaker collection mm -hmm. and then like all the houseplants in my house because my mum is really into like gardening and everything I need some tips for yeah. <laughs> my pot, I have a potter's plant and it is dying oh no and I, and I have repotted it and I don't know what's happening oh, no. so I'm going to talk to you literally <laughs> she's like Ever since we were little, she just loves gardening. She loves it so much. And like with all the house plants in the house, I literally took those two things and like just did like a little photography project. Then after I put them on like Instagram and like LinkedIn and whatever. And then like it got really like a really good reaction to it. Mm -hmm. Like people like, oh my God, this is so cool. And I was like, oh, okay. Like this is, this is a thing. Yeah. Then basically, yeah. So then that led to me like sort of, coming up with the whole concept of like sneaking house plants like a community space that would like explore both but then also like the sustainability aspect because obviously like with the climate change report and everything like mm -hmm. it's something really important that I feel like everyone needs to do that little bit and like obviously with the bigger like uh sneaker companies they really need to sort of like show what they're gonna do to help um so yeah so we created the whole like, Instagram page first of all and then we post like educational content mm -hmm. or like sometimes I do collage because I really like collage so basically it's all digital assets that we make um and yeah and then I co-run that with my partner because he's um he's into like sneakers as well um so he's got like amazing knowledge like about like he'll see a shoe and he's like oh yeah that was in 19 blah 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 that yeah, was yeah. so like he, I needed his like extra knowledge so like yeah we basically started it together um but I run like all the social media and like the content and stuff um yeah so that's sort of how it started and it's sort of like growing gradually from mm -hmm. there is it so is that your full-time job oh no so yeah so my I do freelance, okay. um, social media, content creation, um, and then that is sort of on the side. Side hustle. Side hustle, side hustle. Side hustle, hoping um, to make it. Yeah, so job. yeah, that's sort of the side hustle. Because obviously it's sort of like, we, I spend like, I don't know, like a Thursday and a Friday and I'll do all the content for there mm -hmm. um, to make sure that it's all like ready for the coming weeks. Um, yeah. Okay, nice. Mm. Um, so what kind of started you started the passion for sneakers what got you into sneakers um I feel like sort of when I was younger my mum would always like dress us in like Nike or like Adidas Shut up, your mom yeah I did, I'll, send <laughs> I'll send the pictures to you I'll send the pictures I'll send the pictures to you but um yeah and like I always remember like Reebok like she'd put this little Reebok jumper on us and like dungarees and stuff so like oh. I feel like yeah, from there, like into like the sportswear scene. Um, and then also like when I was younger, like I'm really into like print media. Mm -hmm. So like I would look through like, I love the like sneaker adverts or like the classic like Nike adverts. Like I just think they're so cool. So retro. Literally. So yeah, sort of, I guess from there, um, I sort of was interested in like sneakers. And then basically throughout my teens, it would be like, oh I'd save up for like something I'd be like oh my god I got these chains so it'd be like one a year and then you look at yourself now and you're like oh my god one a, <laughs> one a month or something god. so yeah it was basically from there okay nice yeah. um have you did you start sneakers and house plants with the sustainability aspect like did you want to push that uh, we, message yeah we d we definitely did because um 
uh, I just feel like with, I love buying like sort of like trainers and stuff, but then sometimes I'm like, like with the materials, like they're just, some of the materials are just so cheap and like, mm-hmm. like you can tell that they're just literally pumping them out like next one, next one. So like, yeah, I've always sort of been interested in sustainability and like sort of trying to be more conscious about what I'm doing and what I'm consuming. Um, so yeah, we really, and I felt like there wasn't really another page or like another, like someone else that I was sort of doing that. Cause I felt like when we created it, we needed to find like that edge, I yeah. guess, to make sure that it was like, like accepted well yeah. from other people. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cause I was wondering if, um, if it basically came about because you were just buying loads of shoes and you were like, yeah, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I feel guilty. It's <laughs> killing the planet. Yeah. I need to do something about this. Yeah. I feel like it was, I feel like you do look at yourself sometimes like, and I don't want to fall in with like the hype of buying things. Cause I'm like, Oh, that's cool. Let me just buy that. Like now I'm actually thinking when I buy things, what is, what is my reason for buying this? Like, so if I buy a new pair of trainers, I'd be like, so why do I like these though? Like, why do I need these in my collection? Mm-hmm. And normally for me, it would be like down to like the story behind like the creation of the sneaker or like, I feel like the clothes I wear are quite bright and vibrant. So like normally I buy a pair based on that. Um, but yeah, I feel like I am now becoming more conscious about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, because you're probably researching mm. as well. So you're probably learning a lot more um, mm. stuff about production and yeah, wasted, and materials yeah, and things. You probably didn't even realize. Before. No, <laughs> so it's like a blessing and a curse. Yeah, you're becoming more <laughs> yeah. more knowledgeable about yeah. it. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I've always been interested in having a conversation. So since you touched on religion earlier, because mm-hmm. even myself, it's like I'm Sikh, so um, you know I am religious and I do kind of. I'm, I don't, I wouldn't consider myself materialistic, but obviously I have a lot of I have a lot of shoes. I mm. have more shoes than needed for two feet. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, um, how do you kind of find the balance, or do you struggle with finding the balance between being like omitting worldly things and also? you know being interested in fashion and being interested in sneakers and stuff like that um even like jewelry or anything but mm. obviously we're talking about sneakers so yeah <laughs> do, you, do you find that you have an internal battle because i i do like yeah. i will say that i definitely do which is why even i'm trying to become more conscious of what mm. i'm buying and yeah and i'm trying to like not care so much about shoes and things yeah yeah just like if someone steps on it, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know what they stood on it. Couple years ago, I'll cry. <laughs> Honestly, I would have, oh, I would have had an argument. We would have, yeah. but it's like, yeah, I'm trying to detach myself while still mm. being, you know, passionate about it and still being a sneakerhead. It's, yeah, I, I, I personally think it's hard to find the balance. Yeah, I feel like with me, I've. I feel like it's hard to like to so say if there's like a really expensive shoe, I'll be like, oh, I really want that. But something inside me is like, that is not worth four, five, six hundred, whatever pounds. And there will be, I don't know, sort of like a bad feeling inside me. Like, imagine all the other thing that people could use that money yeah. for. So I feel like in that sense, it would, that is what it would be for me. It would be, I don't know, like a, a guilt element. Yeah, yeah. Sort definitely. of like. I would think about like people could use this for like food or anything. So like, that's why I feel like I am now more conscious as well, because there is that sort of like guilty element of like, should I be spending this much on this? And then also like, for me, like I'm thinking I'm still living at home. Like I don't really have much responsibility Mm -hmm. to pay for. And I'm like, the other side of me is like, oh, pay for it now. Cause then when you have a house or whatever, you won't, (laughs) you won't have this money. So then there's that inside me as well. But then there is definitely a guilt element. Like I won't spend like 100 and 100 pounds or something. And if I do, I would probably maybe save up for something like as I did like when I was younger, like to make it really worth it or buy something like to say, I don't know, I got a new job or something like really big in my life. Mm -hmm. It would be like to represent that. So then it would have meaning rather than, oh, I just spent, I don't know, 500 pounds or something on for what reason? There there was no reason for that. (laughs) I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I feel like I am more conscious, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely a guilt thing. Mm. Like with especially with everything happening in the world. Yeah, like definitely. even just sometimes I think about like the refugees and stuff. Yeah. Like, 
I could just donate this money. Yeah. I mean, I try and help in other ways. I don't yeah. believe in um, talking about stuff that you do yeah, yeah. for public interest. But um, yeah, it's very, it's, it's, it's hard. hard. It's, it's hard, hard to talk hard about thing. because it's like, this is an industry we're so interested in. Mm -hmm. And it's an industry that's so fast moving. And people are always like, oh, I need that newest thing. Yeah. I need to wear that. If And then there's that element of like, oh, if I don't have that, like... What are people not? What are people going to think? Because I don't really care about what people yeah, yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, But it is that element of like, oh no, am I going to like? I'm not going to have that. Like, you feel sort of like, oh no, I need to. It's like people lose interest. In yeah, me. are people going to not interest in me because I didn't get those shoes? Yeah. Um, but I can see you're rocking the patterns. Yes. Oh, I don't have to. Get them up. <laughs> Yay. Yay! That is my favorite one. That is, is the most. Yeah, I love that. I one. love these because I always wear blue. Like oh, blue yeah, is yeah. like my favorite color. And like oh, earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and I just feel like I just love the whole ride the wave thing because I feel like that's just like that's me. Oh. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I'm doing in my life. life. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just out of uh, uni. That's what yeah. you should be doing. That's, that's true. That's um, true. But with that shoe especially everybody was like did you catch that i mean yeah i said it in my comments sorry yeah. um i'm oh, sorry my captions but everyone was like oh have you caught, have you caught thought, the second yeah. wave have you caught the third wave yeah. and it's like well did you catch them all or, no. or are you not interested no in i got so i didn't get the first ones okay. i really wanted them but um no i only got these ones but i got these i won these twice so i won them from lucky yeah but basically i won them from offspring yeah and then i got these from end like so end sent them to my house and then offspring was like you had to collect but I had COVID, so I couldn't go. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that worked out well. But yeah, you. it worked out because I got a pair and then I was kind of feeling, feeling guilty that I had two pairs. So I was yeah. like, what am I going to do with the other pair? So I, it kind of worked out well. Did they just reallocate it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But I was like, please don't ban me from the rest <laughs> of the raffles. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. Um, and did you not... That's the only one you said yeah. you got, right? Yeah. Did you not want the rush maroons that just came No, out? I didn't. Like, for me, like in my head, when I buy trainers, I'm like what colors of things do I already have? So I'm always like, oh, I already have sort of like a purple, like this is me being more conscious. I'm like, yeah. I already have a trainer that's sort of purple plummy color. Like, do I need another one? Unless I really like the, the design, but I felt like I already had the design in this color. So I don't need to, don't need to do it. <laughs> I can't do it. So yeah, no, just yeah. this one. Cause um, I'm like the same, but for me it was more, I just, I liked the shoe. Yeah. I didn't really know shoe. what I would wear it with. Yeah. Like <laughs> like that color. Yeah. I, I still now, like, I don't know what I would wear it with. And I've had the opportunity to get that shoe like four times. Yeah. And yeah. every time I'm just like, no, when people are trying to hot me up and be like, no, why, why haven't you got the pack? <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Like I have collected trainers, crepe sneakers, yeah. bugs, whatever yeah. you want to call them for so long mm. that I'm just, I don't care about having a pack anymore. Like, no. yeah, it'd be cool. Yeah. To say that I have them all, well, yeah, but I don't. I don't need it sitting in, in, yeah, in my collection for like five years yeah. until I until I wear it. Wear but it I feel out. like I, there is definitely um, pressure. Pressure. There is pressure from the external community, yeah. especially when you put yourself out to be a collector or mm -hmm. a sneakerhead. Mm -hmm. That they're just like, well, well why, right. haven't, why haven't why haven't you caught the wave? It? Yeah, why haven't you caught the third wave? It's like I didn't want to catch it. I didn't want to catch it. Take it back. <laughs> um, are you going for the blacks? No, oh. no, I'm, I'm being good. I'm like, very just good. one, I could do this one. And oh. this, like, I did want the Monarch, like those yeah. ones, but I didn't get those. What um, size are you? Five. Anybody, anyone, anyone five? listening that has a five, <laughs> not, no resellers. Yeah, no resellers. Ugh, Every no day I got resellers in my comment section trying to reply yeah. to people being like, I got those. Yeah, for like 500 pounds. Like, yeah, and I'm like, no, get out, mate. No, <laughs> no we don't want that. Um, um, but yeah, free sellers that want to trade and you know offer yeah, reasonable yeah, yeah. prices. Reasonable you're price. you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> but, we could we could talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you're not into you no. not no no and yeah, I feel like I'm definitely being more conscious. That's really good. Yeah, I aspire to be as uh, sensible as you. <laughs> <Tash>. <laughs> yeah, but in a couple of years, who knows? Like we'll see. No, I'm gonna stick to it. Well, you might be having brand deals then. Yeah, might be getting free free Hello. Crepes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, what is the goal? Where do you, where do you see yourself in a couple of years? I feel like I don't know. I feel like it's so scary to think about that. Like, cause I'm very like oh, <laughs> riding do whatever. The wave. Like, I'm riding the wave. That's me. I feel like that's my life. Like, cause I used to be really serious about things. Like, 
in like for a job or whatever I was mm-hmm. like I really and I used to really beat myself up about it like if I didn't get a certain job or like if I didn't like do something properly but now I'm just thinking like after this whole pandemic thing like I'm really trying to be more laid back about things and sort of like it will happen when it happens like as long as I feel like I'm doing at the moment what I want to do like whatever I want will come to me yeah like that's how I'm trying to think about it because I would always get sort of like again with that pressure of like I need to I need to be somewhere but I'm like I've only just come out of uni like like from speaking to other people like in the community they would be like oh my god you're like you're only 22 like there's so many years but I'd be like oh but then you'd look at other people but then you have to remember like everyone started somewhere yeah so that's really made me like from talking to other people like I need to relax (laughs) (laughs) I need to relax because what is for me will come to me Mm -hmm. so yeah I feel like I've gone on a tangent now um but yeah in a couple years I feel like like I'm really into sort of set design um but sort of like maybe like for sort of sneakers like set design I feel like that's something I would really want to do or sort of like creative direction like I'm always like coming up with ideas for things um yeah I feel like that and then like I guess in terms of sneakers and house plants they grows hopefully um and then we sort of want to run workshops Mm because I love like I'm such a chatty person I love talking to people um so like the idea of running workshops for other people um would be like like that's what I want to do um so like the workshops we're thinking sort of like would collab with other creatives and sort of give them that platform to sort of do a creative workshop around either sneakers or like the house plant industry mm-hmm. um yeah so like right now we're sort of filming um digital ones because obviously it's sort of like the pandemic um but yeah we'd love to do like our IRL events yeah. like I would just love that like the I don't know, like when you go to an event and you just talk to people, it just makes you feel like, it makes you feel so good, I feel like. Um, So I feel like, yeah, sort of that's my way to like, I guess, give back sort of to other people because I'd love to do it sort of like um, for like underprivileged communities Mm -hmm. because sort of where I'm from, um, I sort of live in a town, but it's very low income. And um, that's another thing, like you think of, oh, I have all these trainers and there's people around me that have nothing. Mm -hmm. So that really like it really touches me when I think like that's what I'd want to do like I'd love to give back to like younger communities even that element of like my mum let me do creative industries but sort of people in like low-income industries that in my area they wouldn't think of that because they're like oh like you need money to go to uni you need to like um or we need a job that's gonna like be give us money like that nine to five like so I feel like if we'd run workshops for them I don't know, it would be like... Yeah, it would give them a new insight. New insight. Because I feel like even when I was at sort of school, there was like pushback on like creative. They'd be like, no, no, you don't like, why why are you doing creative industry? There's no money in it. Mm -hmm. They would push for you to like be doctors or any like anything or like even like apprenticeships. Like they would be like push for them. Obviously they're good like if you want to do them, but like if you were interested in creative in- industries <laughs> they they were not interested yeah. they did they did not want to talk about it because they just thought it was a dead end um yeah no for sure um how do you think that so obviously when you touch i just want to go back to mm-hmm. about sustainability um do you think that companies what brands are doing in terms of trying to be sustainable do you think that that's a positive thing or do you think that they could do better I th- um mm. Of what is your opinion? Because, sorry, yeah, I, yeah. I was just going to say, when I think about sustainability, funnily enough, I just think of Sean Wotherspoon. Yeah. Uh, and Adidas. Yeah. Um. Well, I'd say funnily enough, I guess they have marketed themselves very well. Yeah. Uh. You know, super. Yeah. Um. And that, I think, other than the move to zero shoes that I've had from Nike. Yeah. Um. That was probably one of my first... Mm. actual like sustainable Sustainable. yeah shoe and i was really impressed by the cork insole yeah um and even like the leather on it and the details and even the box like i was quite impressed by that Mm. um so i was just interested in your opinions because you probably have a lot better insight into the uh the sustainable pay that are out i guess like obviously like brands are making like they're making moves for like sustainability but obviously there's there's always more they can do because they make like they make so much money but 
as long as I feel like as long as some they're doing something, it's better than nothing. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, like you said, like the move to zero, um, I feel like that's really good. Like, cause they're sort of like they did that dunk, didn't they? So I feel like that's good because I feel like when people think about sustainable shoes, they think, oh, they don't look they don't look very nice. What is that made out of? Like, to be fair, like most like some sustainable companies. Like, okay, the shoes don't look that great. They're not that <laughs> great to things that we'd probably buy that aren't sustainable. But that dunk, I felt like was like a really good move because it's showing people like you can have a sustainable shoe, but that looks like other shoes, mm-hmm. which I feel like is really important. They, they need to make sustainable practices for like classic designs that they have already and people are more likely to buy them because to be fair people probably won't even realize that it's sustainable yeah. but then obviously when they've bought it then they read into it and they're like oh this leather's like I don't know sustainable or like the insoles are different or made from recycled, recycled materials yeah. um yeah so I feel like that was really good and I really like I'm um, converse they do converse renew um which is like they sort of take sort of scraps or like um recycled materials to make um converses uh so I feel like that's a really good campaign because obviously like converses for people that aren't even into sneakers most people wear converses so um yeah I feel like it's important for them to do it for classic styles Mm -hmm. because that's more that's more likely what people are going to buy so if you do that for classic styles then obviously people are more likely to be like oh this is sustainable like I didn't realize (laughs) that um yeah so I feel like like that it's a start but obviously it needs to be moved they can do better (laughs) they can do better because obviously the like the sneaker industry is a really high um polluter Mm -hmm. um or so obviously they need to address that because they're gonna keep make they're gonna they're not gonna stop one day they're gonna be like oh we're gonna not nike we're not gonna make any training they're not gonna stop yeah so like (laughs) so they need to like they need to carry on what they're doing basically mm-hmm. but at least they've made a start yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure <laughs> yeah um sometimes i do see some pairs though and i'm like yeah surely it would be better for the environment if you just didn't Did make, make these like, like, yeah. because no, nobody true. is going to buy no, it but that's true because if they're designing shoes like that they need to design it in a way that's marketable mm-hmm. because obviously if it's not then people aren't gonna they're just not gonna buy it Obviously, it'd be people that into that are into sustainability, but still, like I, I'm into sustainability, but I wouldn't yeah. necessarily buy shoes that I don't like the look of. Oh, I think that um, is it Vega. Oh yeah, is that how you pronounce it? Vega, I, I, I'm Vega, Vega. Vega. They um, Vega. they're vegan <laughs> shoes. Yeah, they're vegan leather. Yeah, so obviously they like got such a. Uh, hmm. What's the word? Like not a cult, but such a yeah. solid core like, fan following yeah. following, following like yeah. fan base. Uh, yeah, when they released mm-hmm. launched, they didn't even launch that long ago. No, so I feel like yeah, they're all sort of vegan leather shoes. So obviously they've got that vegan market as well, yeah. and also they're quite a minimal design. So like it's it's marketable. Yeah, like people will Very buy that. True. Um, so yeah, I'm well, I don't mind them, but yeah, the yeah, it's not mine. It's not mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not my ideal shoe, <laughs> my but I, I appreciate what they do oh, yeah. for, for the for the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was a fan of the Nike Air Max pre days. Oh yeah, because that was a brand new silhouette, and mm-hmm. that was um part of their move to zero yeah. campaign. Yeah, yeah. And you got to see the full air bubble. Yeah, which was a uh, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, going back to talking about workshops, you did some. Did you do a flower arranging? Oh yeah. So we went with, to. So you, um, I don't know if you know that days had that that like hundred live. Oh, okay. Event. Um. Yeah. So we went there and then it, it was like um, Sage Flowers and Adidas um, collabed on a, like a flower arranging workshop. Yeah. So yeah, so we all went there. That was great. It was like, I don't know, I've always been interested in flowers as well, but like the whole flower arranging, like Sage Flowers, like their bouquets, oh, I love them so much. I love them so much. So like the chance to do it yourself mm-hmm. and then, I don't know, like that element of like, you're just talking to people and then like, yeah, it was just, it was really good and you sort of like arranged your like bouquet and then everyone sort of showed theirs and like after you were just really I feel like at the end of a workshop when you create something you're really like proud of yourself yeah. like oh my god I made this so like yeah it was so good and like we wanted to go to like more events and workshops to sort of like help us was that the first uh one that you did in person yeah it was in person yeah because obviously we created it sort of like in lockdown so like 
yeah that was the first in-person one so it was oh. so much fun <laughs> that's nice yeah like is that the type of uh is that what you want to do basically? yeah so like the, we've got your, your own <laughs> yeah so like we'd collab with other people so like we filmed one already with um my friend who runs the sustainable um women's wear line mm -hmm. so she sort of dyes all the fabric for What's her clothes i am for? at i am abby millen okay shout out shout out <laughs> hit her up um but yeah she so she all her fabrics are made from hemp okay so yeah. obviously that sustainable element um and she dyes it all with like plants and flowers like it's so cool how she does it um so yeah the first workshop we filmed was with her and her mum's a florist so basically it was sort of her talking about her like creation like how she had come to like create her brand as well because we sort of wanted to like whoever we collab with allow them to have the platform to speak about their business as well yeah um so yeah, that was that was great. And her mum's a florist, so they did like a little flower arranging workshop, which was so cute because it was like her mum inspired her. Imagine if you had hay fever. Oh my god. <laughs> I do I have severe no. <laughs> I have severe hay fever. Like in the summer you'll see me and my I, my eyes will be streaming and they're like, Are you all mad? I'm like, <laughs> hay fever. <laughs> like I have really bad hay fever. So it doesn't go well with the plant. And yeah. So, you know, maybe I'll get a hay fever injection or something. I don't know. Somebody <laughs> told me that people take hay fever tablets wrong. Oh. They were like, you're supposed to take them building up to spring. <gasps> you're not supposed to just take them in spring. Oh my God. Because I, it's, you're supposed to get your body immune to I it. need to do that then. Because my sister said about like, if you have honey from your area as well. Okay. Because from the pollen or something. So if you eat it from the area, then you're... You oh, get right. Fever. Okay. So yeah, for the hay fever sufferers out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, I really didn't think you would have it. Yeah, I have, with, severe, I have severe hay fever. Um, so yeah, we need to fix that. Um, but yeah, but I was okay when she did it. That's good. Yeah, I was okay because I guess it was like cut flowers, so it wasn't it wasn't as bad. Like if it was in a field, then obviously, <laughs> yeah, would it go down well? But um, yeah, it was just it was really nice. So we've got that workshop, which was sort of like editing and put, putting together. Um, then like some other examples, we've got like um, one of our friends who's an artist, so he's gonna sort of design. It's either, we're not sure yet, maybe like canvases because he really do, he does like huge canvases that he paints mm -hmm. um, based on like, because he's into sneakers as well, like based on um, sort of his favorite sneaker or sneaker colorways or something. Um, yeah, and then other florists that we've got like to speak to. Um, yeah, so it's sort of hands-on workshops that we want to do yeah. basically. Um, and we've got sort of like an illustrator who's um, Lauren Fernandez. Okay. Um, so she's she does these like sneaker illustrations that like stickers and things. So yeah, it's like that element that someone can watch it and maybe that could like if they're younger they like, they could be like oh I want to do that mm -hmm. or even if they're older like they're just interested in that person. Yeah. But yeah, it's just given a platform, I guess. Yeah. And showing people kind of that there are different different opportunities, opportunities. Um, and mm. avenues to to yeah. go. At in yeah oh, that's yeah <laughs> um you've got a lot of connections considering you just started in lockdown uh, i don't know i feel like i just talked to so much but that that is literally how stuff happens yeah like, you just true. have to talk to people i mean i'm not a big fan of um of only thinking that you should talk to people just to get something, something back yeah but the fact like is is that yeah it friend way yeah, yeah yeah it shouldn't be with the intent to exchange yeah. but you will especially in london yeah like if you talk to somebody you'll realize that they know someone and they know yeah. someone or they do something, <laughs> something and yeah. um but yeah being friendly yeah exactly That's and I feel like way. at uni because I went to a creative arts uni everyone was creative so all my friends they they're all doing something so like mm -hmm. my friend that has that brand or like my other friend just sent us she's really into like music marketing um I'm plugging all my friends now yeah go <laughs> for it and then my friend Kazen she does um hair and then my other friend she does design like we all talk to each other and help each other which I love like mm -hmm. that we all want to help each other out and like we know that we're all trying like we're all grinding like we're yeah. all trying to get somewhere but like if someone needs help I don't know with a photo shoot we'd be like oh we can do it like I just love that like collaborative effort that we want to help each other rather than I don't know some people be like this is my thing mm -hmm. I don't I don't need you I don't want that yeah. I really don't like that I well, just they don't want to bring people in bring on people projects. in on projects I just I really don't like that I don't know why I just I feel like like if I ever had an opportunity I would be like anyone that was related I'd be like come let's do it <laughs> together but I don't know maybe it's just like the type of person I am I don't know but yeah 
Yeah, it might also be because you wrote with sisters. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, you unfortunately true. have to learn to yeah. share. <laughs> <laughs> I have to share everything, and I'm a middle child, so. Oh, do you have middle child syndrome? Yeah. <laughs> I say it to my fr- my mum all, all the time. I'm like, oh, I'm the middle child. I'm the youngest. Uh, are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everyone loves me. I see how it is. <laughs> um, do you have a female focus then in the stuff that you do, or are you just? I feel are you like just chilling. <laughs> you just for I everybody? feel like for me, it would be like female focus because obviously I'm female. But like, if I'm thinking about people that inspire me. Obviously, it would be like women, females. But obviously, I run it with my partner. So like, but it is true. Like, I probably do more of the female stuff and he does more of like connects with like males, I mm-hmm. guess. Um, but I guess it's like that group. That might also just be because you're in a relationship. Yeah, true. <laughs> you, you, I can't talk to the boys. Like. <laughs> you got a man. Yeah. <laughs> you're not oh. DMing him. <laughs> so, yeah. So I feel like for me, it is. And then me, it's especially it's like women of color like Mm -hmm. definitely like that's so important to me because like growing up like there was hardly any role models or like people that I would be like oh you look like me like so I feel like us even doing this I feel like this is so important like for younger brown girls that would look at it and be like oh my god like that's someone that looks like me because growing up it was I do I do live in like a quite a multicultural area um but like even going to uni, I was the only Asian girl in my class. Okay. So it was like, like, I don't know, it's fine. But like, I don't know, there'd be certain things that would happen. You'd be like, oh, like, oh, I am the mm. only, I'm the <laughs> only one. Um, or like all my projects were about culture. And then yeah. you'd present it. And, and, you're, and you're everyone would be like, culture. <laughs> and no, everyone would be like, oh, okay. Like no one, I would get really excited about things. And I don't know, that wasn't like reciprocated always. Um, but someone yeah. would ask you as the best place to get curry yeah literally <laughs> so like I don't know so I feel like it's so important like for me for like like women of colour like in this industry it's especially like I don't know like South Asians like there's I feel like I can't think of loads of people that mm. I know that are in South Asians that are in the sneaker scene like yeah I got um I got asked to help somebody I'm not sure if I can talk about it but to help find some south asian uh mm. female sneakerheads for a project yeah and even i was struggling i'm like i try to pride myself off the fact that i'm connected to quite a lot of women in the yeah. scene and i was like e- i can only think of a handful yeah yeah like well a handful that are wanting to put themselves out, out there, there. Kind of thing, which no shame to anybody mm-hmm. that doesn't uh, i know what it's like um but yeah it's it is a shame but yeah. it's like people even used to say to me like how do you deal with aunties and how she dated and i'm just like i've had a public profile for years now yeah. like if i cared about aunties i wouldn't I ever ju- have got to make a shit li- with night literally like i you just can't care no they're going to talk for godless. exactly <laughs> like, that's their favorite going- hobby <laughs> <laughs> honestly they are going to talk regardless yeah their kids will follow you they'll report back yeah it just it is what it is yeah you just have to not care yeah i feel like that's so important like i really i i don't care or like especially like being in an interracial relationship like my mum and family were okay with that but obviously other people in like my family or whatever that know about it probably aren't okay with that but I don't care Mm -hmm. like as long as the most important person to me is my mum and my sisters yeah as long as they're okay I could care less what anyone else says um but I feel like also sometimes people think that if you are with someone of a different culture that you don't like your culture or you don't appreciate it anymore and you want to cut there's nothing to nothing to do with that it's just like yeah it's hard sometimes because I feel like people do think other things but like it's just what it is isn't it there's nothing like I don't want to do anything about it I'm happy (laughs) it's so refreshing to hear somebody (laughs) feel the same way because I was always like as long as my mum and my dad know yeah and like and god knows yeah and i am fine with my truth yeah like, think what you want exactly <laughs> I couldn't care less. yeah <laughs> totally um okay well unfortunately i feel like we are coming to the end yeah. um before we go is there anything that you want people to keep an eye out for do you have anything in common um so yeah the workshops of yeah. things the house that will be coming out soon um take yeah. a hay fever tablets guys yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the workshops and basically yeah just growing our page basically so if anyone wants to give us a cheeky follow that's yep. sneakers and 
house plants and house plants yep um i'll put it on screen yeah uh that'd be great <laughs> um and do you want to plug your own page oh yeah so it's at tasha baines underscore that's me <laughs> yeah um well is there anything else you want to, need, you want them to I say don't think so. I feel no like, i feel like i've been on a tangent happy? to be honest yes definitely are you happy with uh what the women are doing in the community yes i am i love i love tt i literally love her <laughs> Big so up much TT. um and even you yourself like yourself for me especially like as we said before like there's no south asians in the scene like you are someone that i would look up to oh, thank you definitely because like i i like people that i look up to are people that i feel like i can relate to mm-hmm. so you are definitely someone that i would be like oh my god like i love what you're doing so yeah <laughs> oh, thank you so much yeah. and thank you for coming on today That's okay um so yeah guys make sure you check her out tasha okay. baines also sneakers and house plants yes. um make sure you like comment share subscribe i've been sandy also skg.jpg this has been her story in sneakers and we shall catch you in the next one bye guys bye